Vice President and Dr. Biden, with these beautiful crystal vases. The vases are of the finest quality full lead crystal from Lenox, China and Crystal. The images of the United States Capitol and the White House are hand cut and etched into the crystal. The crystal bases on which the vases sit are inscribed with the name of the recipient and today's date. President Obama, Mrs. Obama will receive the vase depicting the White House. Vice President Dr. Biden will receive the vase depicting the United States Capitol. The vases were designed by Timothy Carter and hand cut by master glass cutter Peter O'Rourke. At this time, my wife Diana and I invite the President Mrs. Obama and Vice President Dr. Biden to join us in looking at the beautiful vases. Okay, I am now pleased to invite my colleague, House Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi, to the podium to present the mementos that you all will receive as you leave Statuary Hall. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman Schumer and co-chair, vice chair Alexander, for a wonderful, wonderful inauguration. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, <laughs> First Lady, First Lady, First Lady, <laughs> Dr. Biden, to all of our distinguished guests. So far, you've heard of gifts to, our, uh, to the President and the Vice President. I'll tell you about a gift for you. Freedom now stands on the dome of the Capitol of the United States. May she stand there forever, not only in form, but in spirit. Those were the words that were expressed 150 years ago by the Commissioner of Public Buildings as the Statue of Freedom was placed atop the Capitol during the presidency of, of President Lincoln. That expression of the spirit of freedom is what we want you to take with you today and is contained in the port this portfolio of essays you will receive from the Joint Congressional Committee on the inaugural ceremonies, along with a framed depiction of the Capitol as it appeared at the start of the Civil War. You heard it well described by Chairman Schumer during his remarks. Today, the Statue of Freedom and that spirit of freedom watches over the Capitol as another president from Illinois takes, has taken the oath of office. Despite the challenges of our time at home and abroad, we heard in President Obama's inaugural address a message of hope, a vision of peace, progress and prosperity, and the promise of freedom for all. May God bless you, President Obama, Vice President Biden, and your families. Congratulations with, much, with wishes for much success for you, for that is the success of our nation. May God bless you all. May God bless America. Enjoy your memento of the occasion.
Mr. President and Dr. Biden and your whole wonderful family and family, I now rise to toast the Vice President of the United States and my former colleague and my friend, Joe Biden. Mr. Vice President, you have been an extraordinary leader of this nation and a true partner to our President these past four years. You play many roles, advisor, advocate, implementer, persuader, strategist, and most important of all, friend. We're confident this unique partnership between you and our great president will only grow stronger and more productive over the next four years. Mr. Vice President, on the surface, we don't share a common ancestry, but on a deeper level, we do share a common story, an American story, of achieving our dreams thanks to the sacrifice of our immigrant forebears. As you embark on your well-deserved second term, in the spirit of those who came before us, and on behalf of all Americans, we offer you all our support and warmest wishes. And we say to you, Slancha, Lachaim, Salut, Chendan, and cheers to our great Vice President. Mr. President, and all the presidents assembled, uh, I, uh, I always enjoyed this lunch uh, more than anything we did in the Capitol. For the 36 years I served in the Senate, I had the great honor of being included in this lunch, uh, the former presidents and vice presidents, and uh, because it really is um, it really is the place where uh, we get together in a way unlike any other time when we gather. It's always a new beginning every time we're in this room. And there's a sense of possibilities and a sense of uh, opportunity and a, and a sense sometimes is fleeting, but a sense that maybe we can really, re really begin to work together. And uh, Chuck, uh, we may come from different ancestries, but uh, as all our colleagues know over the years, we're cut from the same cloth, that uh, we share that same common uh, uh, absolute conviction that was expressed by Harry Truman when he said, America was not built on fear. America was built on courage, on imagination, and an unbeatable determination to do the job at hand. That's uh, what you've done throughout your career, and that's what almost everyone in this room uh, has done. At the end of the day, it's an absolute confidence, absolute confidence. There's not a thing, a single thing, this country can do. I spent too much time with all of you not to know you feel it with every fiber in your being that there's nothing, nothing, this, capable, this country is incapable of. I must say, the president kids me occasionally. I know Harry Reid always calls me a Senate man. I am proud to have been a Senate man. I am proud to be president of the Senate. But that pride is exceeded only by the fact I am proud to be vice president of the United States, serving as Barack Obama's vice president. It's one of the great privileges. One of the great privileges of my life. As a matter of fact, if the president will forgive me, as we're walking out, and he was, uh, as he said, savoring the moment, looking out at the crowd and all those Americans assembled, I found myself, surprised me even, turned to him and saying, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the chance. Thanks for the chance to continue to serve. And so, folks, I raise my glass to a man who never never, never operates out of fear, only operates out of confidence. And I'm toasting you, Chuck. Oh. <laughs> and a guy, a guy who I plan on working with. You 
can't get rid of me, man. Remember, I'm still part of the Senate. God bless you, Chuck. You've done a great job, and Lamar, you have as well. To Chuck Schumer. Thank you, Chuck. Good to see you, pal. The best parts of these events are unscripted. Um, I'd now like to introduce our Senate Majority Leader, my good friend and really foxhole buddy, a great man, Harry Reid, to offer the official toast to the President. Americans today are wishing the President Godspeed for the next four years. People all over the world are looking at us and our exemplary democracy and wishing the President the best in the years to come. I've had the good fortune for the last many years to work on a very close personal basis with President Obama. I've watched him in the most difficult challenges that a person could face. I've watched him do this with brilliance, with patience, with courage, wisdom, and kindness, for which I have learned a great deal. So, Mr. President, I toast and pray for you your wonderful family, and our great country. Four more successful years. Barack Obama. Michelle and uh, the Speaker of the House uh, came to a meeting of the minds that uh, I may be delaying the proceedings too much. Uh, and so I'm just going to be uh, extraordinarily brief and say thank you um, to my Vice President, who uh, has not only been an extraordinary partner, but an extraordinary friend and to Dr. Joe Biden, uh, who has uh, partnered with my wife uh, with an extraordinary generosity on behalf of our men and women in uniform, uh, to uh, the entire cabinet that is here, uh, I'm grateful to you. Some of you are staying and some of you are leaving, but uh, I know the extraordinary sacrifices that you and uh, my team have made uh, to try to advance the cause of progress in this country, and I'm always going to be grateful to you for that. Uh, to uh, the Speaker of the House uh, and uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, to uh, Democratic Leader Harry Reid, uh, as well as uh, Republican Leader uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, and to all the congressional leaders uh, and all the members of Congress who are here, uh, I recognize that democracy is not always easy. Uh, and I recognize there are profound differences in this room. Uh, but I just want to say thank you for your service, uh, and I want to thank your families uh, for their service, because regardless of our political persuasions and perspectives, I know that all of us serve because we believe that we can make uh, America for future generations. Um, and I'm confident that we can act at this moment in a way that makes a difference uh, for our children and our children's children. You know, I know that uh, former President Carter, President Clinton, uh, they uh, understand uh, the irony of the presidential office, which is the longer you're there, the more humble you become. Uh, and the more mindful you are that uh, it is beyond your poor powers individually uh, to move this great country. Uh, you can only do it because you have 
extraordinary.